So really looking forward to today. It's going to be a, a lot of fun to kind of go through uh, really our, our next big topic here in, in Confab, which is our co-pilot capability series that we've been kind of doing as part of this. So uh, pleasure to be on stream. Uh, my name is Scott Papier. If you've not met me before, I'm the chief software architect of Stone Ridge Software. And really what I like to do is just show um, some of the capabilities and uh, some of the progress, obviously, that we've made uh, in the co-pilot capabilities for Dynamics 365. There's been a lot of marketing conversation around this. Uh, many of you already know, uh, obviously, of uh, Copilot and its capabilities that Microsoft has been adding to all the products. Uh, but I think the key thing here is that I want to focus more on the realization of what we can do with Copilot. Um, more specifically around that, a lot of the comments I get from a lot of different people, um, whether or not they're in the tech space or they are external, uh, really is around Copilot being a solution looking for a problem. Um, and I, I kind of understand the sentiment with that, to be quite honest, but um, I firmly disagree with it is what it really boils down to. There's a lot of different technologies that are out there, um, obviously, that are kind of like that, right? But in this situation, um, I want to go through today and just show more of why, uh, in terms of alignment, I feel that we could actually do more, obviously, with Copilot, and that you could be using it even now to start addressing some of those needs that you have internally in your business. Um, if you haven't been on a Stone Ridge uh, Confab before, just at, at a high level, uh, it's an interactive session. I know, Rob, I saw you post. You're ready for the fabulous Confab here, which is awesome and great. Um, as you have questions, comments, opinions of things, feel free to pop them in the chat. Um, I'm always super curious on what people are thinking about Copilot capabilities. And one of the first questions I'd really like to ask of the audience here is, what have you been doing uh, with Copilot if you've been experimenting with it? And where are you in that adventure? Uh, so if you're on LinkedIn, for example, go ahead and put in a comment just really quickly. Uh, remember, we stream as well this on Twitch and on YouTube as well. So uh, I get to see all the chats that get added to any of those different streams. So please, like I said, go ahead and say what you've done with Copilot or what you're looking forward to with Copilot to address or what you don't like about Copilot, right? Because this is supposed to be a very open and candid conversation uh, in which we help you with the alignment in terms of what the capabilities are, obviously, of the solutions that we really support, which are the, the Microsoft products. Uh, so while that's kind of streaming in here in the background, I'm going to go ahead and just do some house cleaning at the very beginning. Um, so uh, today's session obviously is going to focus more on the co-pilot capabilities. Uh, next week, we're actually going to have another session as well that's going to be focusing more uh, on our community uh, connect. And we'll have some co-pilot content that will be there as well as you can imagine. Uh, and then finally here, we've got a really good strong cadence of new features, obviously, that are being introduced now with our Wave 1 release for 2024. Uh, so obviously, we're going to want to dig into some of those and go through those capabilities uh, and really just understand now um, what can we do, what can't we do, and what's coming down the pike then, um, obviously, to go through and align uh, your business system needs here uh, longer term. Um, so kind of with that then, like I said, as people have questions, feel free to go ahead and post them in chat as we go through this. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to open up a quick slide deck and we're going to take a look at my screen. And what I'm hoping today for everyone that's on stream is that, you know, by the end of this, you're going to understand if you work, for example, in finance and operations, um, what you could do now to potentially extend those capabilities by uh, taking the co-pilot pane, as we'll take a look at here in a second, and then making it your own, right, to go through that as part of that process. So it should be a lot of fun to go through that and, and understand now what you can do. And this is just, like I said, this is a concept that we're starting to talk through, right? Um, there are multiple ways to tackle this. And what's really cool about it, uh, I don't know if Carl is on, he'll state something maybe in the background as well. He's part of our team. Um, Carl has actually gone through and created some really cool functionality in FNO that is different than the way that Microsoft is talking about it, meaning he's basically embedded Copilot 
inside of FNO in the pages so that we can do things very similar or akin to what we were showing in some of the demonstrations of Copilot, like the proposed PO changes, where you have a much more direct impact, obviously, on the data and the influence of it, as opposed to the Copilot pain experience that we're going to be going through as well. And I don't mean pain and hardship, but I mean the pain, like a single glass pain, uh, as we go through that. So we're going to make sure uh, that we cover that portion of the functionality because that is really where uh, Microsoft is looking at the first party modifications to be done by ISVs, by partners, and also by potentially customers as well. But remember, what we have the ability to do doesn't always just align to what the Microsoft provided first party experience is. So we've done things even at Stoneverge where we've created custom integrations, we've created uh, custom controls as well that can be used like for example on CE and on forms. Um, the point of a partner is that we're experimenting to find the best value obviously for our prospects and customers that we interact with. So a couple comments came in here in the background. Joe, really appreciate being on Confab here. Uh, Joe says, I use Copilot to help me write some posts or other things when I uh, want a different perspective. Um, also had my realtor write the house description for us recently, right? So a lot of this natural language capability, and I'm gonna show some of this as well that we've done, for example, with the leverage product, um, allows us to really uh, expose different types of workloads and scenarios that we can address just using natural language. And I think that that's the really key thing here is that when we look at Copilot enablement inside of Dynamics 365, what you should probably think through at a high level is that it's a way that you can interact with computers using natural language. And that's a really important distinction, right? Because if we think about the longer term goal of having more developers, more people involved in the conversation, when we look at low code, no code, and the power platform, for example, as well, what we're really saying is that we wanna make it so that we break down barriers in terms of ideas and concepts that others have that can basically make then a business system better because of those perspectives. Now I get it, there's a lot of different knowledge and background that architects have versus for example, a functional consultant or even an end user, but as an architect, do I really wanna start working on, for example, code to just create a bunch of alerts for different conditions that an end user may have? Or would I rather give them the ability to interact with the system to control how they create those alerts and focus more than on the architectural enhancements and viability of how the alerting mechanisms would then interact with users being able to create any alert that they want like what would i want to do from an architectural perspective to to tackle that versus trying to program for every condition that an alert could happen right and this is a age-old problem to be quite candid i remember back in the day with the nav product or navision product before even microsoft acquired them where we got this functionality called business alerts that was added that was so cool where we could go ahead and basically program at any event when we wanted basically an alert to occur but it was all programmatic right it was all high level code that we had to create to do that with the power platform we've gotten some more capabilities to do more with that but at the end of the day, what, 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 really boil, what it really boils down to is that we need to be able to make it easier for people to do computer-based actions without writing code, because that is how we're going to increase scalability and adoption with our platform versus creating professional code. If you think about it, a lot of the code and processes that we do, and if you really unveil this and look back at it, it's going to resonate probably with a lot of people that have been in the industry. but. A kidding process 20 years ago is the same as a kidding process now, right? So a lot of that business logic has just been reused from different business systems for that best practice or that process and incorporated into it. And if you want to expand it, obviously it's been kind of painful to potentially do that, right? So the point here is using Copilot to augment some of those capabilities to make it easier for you to adapt to change really quickly as you go through those processes. So I guess with that, um, I've taken enough time up just pitter pattering here as well. Uh, Rob did put something in here as well. I uh, use Copilot to help us be better at almost anything. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot, right, that, that we can do with Copilot to be better. And just honestly, look at it through the lens of being able to have an assistant 
automate actions for you to be able to then increase your scalability inside of your business environment. We always talk about doing more with less. Well, Copilot, frame it in that aspect where you can do more with less as we go through a lot of these different processes. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here just really quick, flip over. You should see, oh, we've got my wrong screen there, obviously. So let's go ahead and just do a quick update to this so that we can get it focused on the right screen. So my display capture is not updated for some reason. It's set to auto, that was why. So boom, there we go. That should look a, a little bit better. So um, Copilot for Dynamics 365, right? Um, so I'm gonna start with the slide decks here and we're gonna talk through just at a really high level some of the slides that I've, I've kind of gone through in the past already at this point. So when we think about Copilot, Copilot is our everyday AI assistant, right? And if we think about Microsoft Copilot for Microsoft 365, it's our assistant at work, right? And that's the Microsoft 365 story related to it. Well, remember, we also have Copilot for finance, and then we also have Copilot in finance. Now, these are some of the concepts that we have been giving feedback to Microsoft around. And if it's not confusing for you, then you're doing a fantastic job of understanding all these different Copilots that Microsoft is introducing. But I just want to uh, accent uh, basically uh, a, a key word inside of here that we use to designate whether or not typically this is an add-on or if it's actually a part of, for example, Dynamics 365. So for typically is going to imply with Copilot at this point in its life cycle that it is typically a separate service. So Copilot for Microsoft 365, Copilot for Finance, Copilot for Sales, Copilot for Field Service, right? So these are the full or co-pilots that if you look at the SKU list in Microsoft, you're going to be able to basically go ahead and then sign up for a license for that. For example, Microsoft Copilot for Microsoft 365, which is a mouthful, is actually a $50 license that you can use then or buy to be able to get that Copilot experience then in your M365 or modern work-based apps. Now, that also means that there's this concept of Copilot in Dynamics 365. So in means these are native-based capabilities inside of Copilot that you can use without then purchasing a separate license to use those capabilities. So when we start talking about Copilot in Dynamics 365 sales or Copilot in Dynamics 365 field service, we're talking about having that premium license or above to basically go through and do that alignment. Now, I want to say one thing just really quickly here, because remember at Stone Ridge, we cover all different types of markets from small and medium business all the way up to enterprise. And typically what you're going to see from a Microsoft perspective for the in dynamics based capabilities for Copilot are going to be centered around the premium and enterprise licenses and not the professional licenses. So if you're in Business Central, for example, you may want to consider looking at premium licensing then to be able to support some of these in dynamic type experiences that you're looking at as part of that Copilot enablement inside of your organization. One last thing to note, at Stone Ridge, we've got a team that really understands Copilot that can dig in even further for you, that can help you with an assessment for Copilot readiness, for example, on the M365 side, and our team is continually digging into all these awesome concepts that are there as part of this. Now, when we talk about what Microsoft is doing for Copilot, Let's look at just kind of the, the overarching product uh, uh, design with it, which would be in modern work, for example, when you open up Excel, Copilot is a pane that pops up on the far right-hand side of the application, right? In Dynamics as well, we have that same type of capability. But the really interesting thing about these Copilot-based enablements for sales, customer insights, customer service, field service, finance, supply chain, and even other products, is the fact that we are using Copilot Studio in order to be able to extend then the capabilities of Copilot in Dynamics 365. And what do I mean by that? I mean that the pane that pops out on the right hand side of your application when you're interacting with it is Copilot Studio that you use to enhance that pane on the far right. Now, as we've dug in deeper as a partner, 
and looked at all the different co-pilot type capabilities that Microsoft has been involving or introducing into the finance and operations product, we're gonna see a plethora of different implementation methodologies that Microsoft has used to be able to address those co-pilot experiences. An example of that, in the proposed PO changes, it has, doesn't actually use Copilot Studio. Instead, it calls a web service on Dataverse, which then calls for another process that goes through and basically drives that as part of that process. So net result here is that we are able to obviously go through and then from there use different types of methodologies to add these types of co-pilot experiences into Dynamics 365. And even on the BC side, for example, when we talk about co-pilot enablement, the toolkit that Microsoft has provided is actually accessing an Azure OpenAI service directly instead of using that Copilot pane because it has not been embedded inside of Business Central yet. Now, I think the long-term goal here that I've heard from Microsoft is that that first-party Copilot pane experience really is going to focus around the integration with Copilot Studio for all of the Dynamics products, and that includes Business Central. I've seen some slides now that have Business Central underneath the Copilot Studio pane, so I'm really, really interested longer term to see here what that's going to address. But for today, we're really going to focus, obviously, then on the finance or the supply chain management-based capabilities. Just in summary, the finance and operations platform for that Copilot experience. Now, what I'm going to do here is just really quickly just flip over to one of my last slides here, which is the Copilot Studio based concept with this. So, Copilot Studio is where you go to extend then the Dynamics 365 Copilot capabilities. It's where you can create your own custom Copilots. You can do uh, website based Copilots that then use that type of logic that then could potentially also be used internally. Um, the interesting thing about the Copilot Studio aspect is the fact that when you make Copilot changes in the studio, those Copilot capabilities and topics and all that additional information can be exposed in different experiences. So it doesn't have to be just inside of finance and operations, for example. You could create a Copilot that connects to finance and operations that then is used on your website to be able to do inquiry and some of those other types of topics, as you can imagine, inside of here as well. So the Copilot experience from a first party perspective, if you're wanting to then make a Copilot or extend the Copilot capabilities of the Dynamics 365 product, you're really gonna wanna look at that sales, uh, excuse me, that Copilot Studio to be able to do that. Now, there are other frameworks once again, right? So Copilot Studio, the reason we have that is we need a Copilot experience that is a low code, no code type scenario, right? Like the power platform, so to speak. Whereas there are going to be scenarios where you need, for example, Copilot capabilities on a much more detailed and what we would classify maybe as a pro code based Copilot. Well, we support both, right? We, we have the ability, for example, to create a Azure OpenAI endpoint and then create our own infrastructure around that. And the example I've given on prior confabs has been something like a medical records company where you need to own the data, keep it in the tenant, and you can't have any handoffs of third parties as they go through that processing. Well, you can use then obviously some of those types of services to build your own pro code type co-pilot inside of your organization. But for today, what I want to do is I really want to focus obviously then on the FNO perspective as we do this. So let's go ahead and dive in here. I'm going to go ahead and open up finance and operations and let's start with a demo, right? So I'm going to go ahead and open up my browser. We'll maximize it here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my pre-sales environment, which we should have here. So let me just double check here. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and open it up and we'll focus on the USMF company inside of here. So um, login wise, obviously, this is the really fun thing about Dynamics, right? Multi-factor authentication, all the bells and whistles that you would expect as part of it are here. And what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and get logged in here so that we can open up finance and operations. And then let's start digging in here because it's gonna be a lot of fun. 
So on FNO, if you've got the current version of the solution, you should be able to basically enable the co-pilot functionality inside of our app. And on that, if you go up here and you look at the top right up here, this is where that co-pilot experience is located, right? So you should be able to go ahead and click on, for example, the co-pilot capabilities, and it's gonna pop out that familiar co-pilot pane inside of here that you can interact with. Now, today I'm gonna to talk about some of the limitations that I discovered with this as well as we've been going through and really trying to, to use this as that first party concept, right? Because if we think about the user experience across multiple applications, while we could do direct queries against, for example, an Azure OpenAI infrastructure to do that, the end user experience is not the same as the Copilot pain experience that we're going to look at longer term here. And what do I mean by that? Well, in a Copilot pane inside of Microsoft Office, for example, if I'm in a Word document or maybe even an Excel document, if I pop out the Copilot pane, eventually what I see happening here is that you could ask it a question of your Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations data, and it would pull that into then Excel to interact with that. Now, we're not there yet, but it's only because of security and some of the other aspects that need to be kind of discussed and explored a little bit more in which we don't have that because there's no technical limitation to be able to do that, to be quite honest. And if you want to do that now, where for example, you have Copilot inside of Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations that accesses, for example, your Exchange server, which is through the Graph API to do that, we can do things like that. It's just configuration and setup that really drives that. And I'll be able to show that in just a little bit. Now let's go through like a, a typical experience that I would see with this longer term, right? Which would be something like this where, okay, I wanna look at my customer list, for example, inside of here. So I'd go to my sales order processing and inquiry and click on my all customers page inside of here. And I've got a list of, of customers, or in this example, growers that are set up inside of here, which is like for Pure Farms as an example inside of here. And I wanna go ahead and open up then, for example, for Pure Farms inside of here, and I want to ask it a, a question about maybe this grower in this example, right? So on the far right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say summarize uh, this grower, right? To see what it actually comes at back with for information. So this is where we're starting to get to the power of Copilot now. So inside of Copilot Studio, natively what happens here is that it doesn't actually go through and then look at the data inside of Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations, right? By default, it's looking at, for example, knowledge base articles, the examples that the uh, dev team at Microsoft likes to do that they've also done on some of the uh, uh, tech uh, broadcasts that they've done, um, really focus around being able to ask it for help or how to do a particular process. But the key thing to note here is that it actually goes beyond just basically setting up um, uh, uh, questions and answers, for example, for just data that you want to interact with. It also allows for us then to query data and to build things out that allow us to be able to access that data in more detail. So just as an example here, when I asked that question, it basically focused on what the AR balance is. We can see um, that that's composed of a single invoice. I haven't had to drill into anything to see that detail. Um, I have a comparator that I actually ask uh, the co-pilot to do, uh, where they basically identify for Pure Farms as a top customer, um, and they account for around 12.56% of our product revenue, uh, which puts them as the largest contributor of revenue inside of our customer stack here that we have. Now, these types of details, if you think about, this is the power of Copilot, all I have to do is take a bunch of detail or records and then send it to Copilot to a large language model and say, summarize these aspects of it that I want to have so that way it returns back then basically that information. And just as some of the other examples here, what I can also do is I can say, well, summarize uh, uh, the, uh, we'll say the, uh, we'll say summarize the contracts um, for this particular customer as well. And so we can see here, Prepare Farms Inc. has three open contracts of the three, two of them are contract type of cash, and the last one is a basis contract. Looks like our delivery periods are from 831 to 830 as, or 930 as part of this. 
Um, it looks like uh, our contract uh, that's at the home farm in the north field um, has actually had some delivery of some corn, it looks like, 10,000 bushels um, that were priced at 531 per bushel that's inside of here. Uh, and then the total contract value of the contracts that we have with Frapier Farms um, is really about $1.56 million, right? So, like I said, th this, this is the concept that we're starting to get into, right? Where if you can think of questions that you want to have answered then by Copilot, so it'll actually go through and do that summarization for you, you can actually get to this now inside of finance and operations. Now, the other thing to hear would be, so an example might be, um, create an alert for uh, for Peer Farms Inc. so that when they deliver product, uh, when they deliver uh, product related to a contract, it will send me an email, right? So once again, not summarization, action. Right. And so this is the other aspect of what we need to start breaking down when we start looking at Copilot. Copilot would allow us, for example, to ask it a bunch of questions to summarize information. It does a fantastic job at that. And in your prompt that you send to the large language model as we go through this, you can basically go through and then define, for example, what you want it to summarize or what that question will be to summarize so that it brings back the pertinent information then on the screen for you. Now that's summarization, what about actions, right? And that's the other thing that we can start doing obviously with Copilot Studio as well, where we can say, create that alert, we'll see it work as part of it. And then as you can see here, an alert has been created for Prepare Farms Inc. The alert will be triggered when the delivered quantity changes on a contract. The alert will be emailed to my email address because it knew of my context as I went through this and will show up in the alerts of Dynamics 365, right? So these are, are some of the concepts now where if you try to do this, for example, in your environment with Copilot enabled, you won't get any of this type of capability or response, obviously, with it, right? And so the question is, well, how do I do this? Scott, how do I make this actually then interact then with Dynamics 365 so I can then extend basically the capabilities and use very similar functionality to what we're looking at here to really go through and then make it uh, better? So. Let's go through a couple of those and, and talk through it. And then I'm going to share, I'm going to obviously uh, let you know as well um, where the limitations are because there is some magic that's occurring here. But when we look at GA in the future, um, obviously we're going to be able to go through and go into some more detail as, as we go through that as well. So um, let's go ahead. Um, uh, looks like I got some, uh, some comments here yep so Carly great question yeah we usually do have the the background music going on in the background I try to turn it down just a little bit uh, but yeah if it's too distracting uh, please anyone in chat let me know uh, looks like I got some comments in here uh, Betsy appreciate it love the content Scott can you turn down the volume of the music we want to make sure we hear all the content all right that's two people that have actually done that so let me go ahead and make sure that the volume is down and what I can do is turn up that's what happened course my volume on my computer is down so it's really distracting can I get a, a a good good to go if it sounds a little bit better so it's not overwhelming uh, my voice because I'm sure everyone wants to hear it and I'm being facetious there uh, but anyways let's keep rolling here I'm gonna go ahead and turn it down just a little bit more but let's go ahead and look now at how we actually go through and actually do then the setup inside of really Sto uh, Copilot Studio to make a very similar experience to this as we go through this process. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to log in then to powerva.microsoft.com, which is our good old Power Virtual Agents as part of that. Appreciate it, Sam. Thank you, sir. Um, so we're going to go ahead and open up Power Virtual Agents, and we're going to see, for example, that inside of this environment, I have a bunch of co-pilots that have actually been set up then for this particular environment. So 
We can see, for example, in our sales and finance environment that I have basically four different co-pilots that are enabled based upon the application that I'm interacting with. So inside of sales finance for the environment, which is a dataverse environment, I have linked that back into then um, obviously finance and operations via dual right. And mind you, remember you have to have a linked environment, but for a lot of these different types of processes that I'm showing, you don't need to use the dual right framework to act access the data. Um, this is kind of a common misconception right now with Copilot Studio with finance and operations. While in the future, there may be some other limitations that are related to it, from a Copilot perspective in Copilot Studio, I can access data from any repository or any source. So if I have CRM data that's in a non-dynamics product, or if I actually need to take, for example, Business Central data and bring it into here, I can do that as well. But with, if I want to make changes to basically the pane on the far right here from the interaction perspective inside of finance and operations, I would actually be going through and then updating the Copilot inside of Copilot Studio to be able to drive that process. So just as an example inside of here, if I look at my Copilot for finance and operations and I click on this particular Copilot, we can see now that it's actually going through and then making visible, obviously, all of the different types of capabilities then that are exposed then within Copilot Studio that are really then for that finance and operation app capability. And this, once again, the terminology is just so much that I hope in the future we get better at this. Copilot for finance and operations apps, it should be Copilot in finance and operations apps, right? Because that's what they're using from a Microsoft perspective for terminology. And this is, like I said, this is the most confusing part for many prospects and customers. When we say in, we mean that's part of the license. When we say for, that's typically now at this point in time going to be basically an add-on license. It'd be really nice if we got away from that in and for longer term here. And I'm assuming there's going to be feedback to Microsoft that will change that. It's just going to take some time as we get this rolled out. Now, inside of our co-pilot here, if we look at our topics, this is probably familiar for a lot of you, right, that, that have used potentially Power Virtual Agents. But topics are typically then keywords or actions that we use basically to intercept when a user prompts for some type of an action or activity to occur inside of, for example, finance and operations. Well, what it does then is it actually goes through and then catches that and then goes down that topic path basically to align what questions, answers, and what repeatability do you want with it as well? So if you think about like copilot enablement, like a large language model, asking it a single question, not too bad, right? We can get an answer with it. But when you use it to basically ask a question, get a repeat, ask another question, get another response and go back and forth more, you can actually build out then some conditional logic and some topic pathing that can take the advantage then of a large language model and natural language, but then have an output then of something that may be more pro code, low code, uh, no code, but basically conditional, right, as part of that. Whereas, for example, if you have a customer that's on a website and they say they'd like to order a product and it starts to create the order, it could then ask or prompt, for example, well, you didn't tell me what product you wanted initially in your first statement. What product do you want? And what's cool about Copilot Studio is you can then store variables and do things of that nature to bring it along that particular topic path as you go through it. So by default, what Microsoft has done is they've gone through and exposed um, a couple of these app copilot based capability topics that are event based and also phrase based topics that we can interact with. So for example, on our app copilot describe capabilities, if I go ahead and click on that to actually drill into it, what we're going to see is that there is actually then a trigger phrase that occurs that allows us basically to say like what can copilot do what can you do what types of questions can you answer and then what happens is that there's actually a response then inside of that copilot here that then allows us basically then to put a value that says hey this is the message that I can provide for you as part of that so if we actually say what can copilot do for me so as an example what can copilot do for me we'll see then that that response of that topic 
then is displayed here for the end user experience as part of that. So just something to note here is that the topic wise is really what generates then, for example, that question or the list of questions that you may have that may then drive, for example, the subsequent pathing that you want your copilot to go down to. Because we're not saying that copilot, you can just type in and be like, hey, just do this. We want to restrict what it can do, or we want to summarize what it can do, or we want to be more consistent, for example, on what we want that response to be. The example I like to give with that, if I have one person doing a sales order summary, and then another person in that same role doing it, and I get two different answers with two different sets of data, even though I sent the same set of data, but Copilot decided that, for example, the back order status was more important than the uninvoiced amount of that. Well, maybe, right? Maybe in some orgs, back order is a higher priority, but when you have that inconsistency between two user experiences, well, you think about that, that makes that that's why Copilot gets such a bad rap with a lot of people because they're like, it's not consistent with what it does. Well, no, that's because your prompt is not consistent in stating what you want as the output of it. You have to look at it like a person. If you want a person to do something, you have to tell them what you want them to do to provide that information back. And then over time, maybe you can refine that by saying more specific information to be included as part of that result as part of it. So just something to note. Uh, Sam had a question in here. Question, whenever you see fit in a dual write scenarios, can Copilot interchange data between apps? Like between FNO sales, customer service, is there a way to create a specific model in Copilot to combine the Copilots to make a, a, a mega Copilot for a, a multi-product solution? Uh, Sam, that's a really good question. So um, yes, at a high level, yes. So what I can do is in my Copilot, I can create any type of a topic that I want. And then with that topic for the entrance, I can access any information I want as well. So what's interesting here is that I don't believe that it allows you to have, for example, at our co-pilots here, I don't believe at this point, and I'd have to double check this, that I can actually call, for example, a co-pilot for finance and operations that then calls the sales co-pilot, for example. I'm sure that there's probably going to be something like that in the future because it would make a lot of sense in my mind. But at the same point, if I need to access sales data, for example, that is inside of uh, Dynamics 365 sales in Dataverse, and I need to access data that's inside of FNO to come up with an answer or a reply, more of that mega or that, that uh, big uh, co-pilot, right, as part of that, um, then I can do that. And that's, that's actually just set up inside of the topics that we're going to be looking at that drive then that behavior. So like I said, it, it is able to then access data whether or not technically it's deployed to finance and operations or not. Even though this says the Copilot for finance and operations apps, if I wanna access sales data inside of Dataverse, I can do that by just setting up the topic and the pathing that's related to it. Yep, no problem, Sam. It's a great question. So I'm going to look at this a little bit more. And one of the topics I want to kind of show here beyond this is this concept that I've added, which is actually the show context that's inside of here. Now, one of the things that I actually um, kind of noticed here as we were looking more and more into um, co-pilot-based capabilities inside of finance and operations is really I want to kind of test the boundaries. Like, where, where do I run into problems with this? And I will tell you, I ran into the very first problem immediately, which is the current state of context inside of finance and operations, the record that I'm on, for example, is not relayed yet to Copilot. And this is a big gap, as you can imagine. I think what, what's happening here, obviously, is that we're doing enablement by enabling, obviously, the Copilot features. And there's a lot of complexity that I even discovered off of that that probably was the blocker with it in terms of how forms are even rendered inside of Dynamics 365. So kind of as an example here, when we look at a form, right, like if I pick on our all customers form that's inside of here, I've got this whole hierarchy. And if you remember good old AX2012, when you went to do your personalization, you saw that wonderful tree view that you would have. Well, that same concept technically exists as well inside of our pages that we interact even in FNO, where we've got, for example, different controls 
tab page details. As I click into here, for example, we get into address action pane, right? So there's different controls that are embedded basically inside of the form as we go through this. Now, one of the questions I have here is what form am I on? So let's go ahead and ask that. What form am I on, right? As an example inside of here. And what we're going to see is that the context of what Copilot knows from within finance and operations on the left-hand pane that is here, as you can see, it's focused on the postal address grid, right? It's saying the data area ID that's related to it. It's saying, for example, uh, the metadata name of it. And if I close out of this, for example, and then go back into our all customers as an example as well, and I'm gonna try not to click on anything as well as I do that, and then click on the account that's inside of here as well, and I say, what form am I on? we'll see as well that it still focuses on this, even though it's going to be for peer farms that I'm interacting with. Now, if I change context here and focus with it, what form am I on? We will see eventually here that it will update the context with it, depending upon obviously what's focused. And as you can see, it doesn't look like it wants to do that because it's still stuck on that lower level. Here we see it's finally on the customer table, right? And the customers as the page context for it. So this this is a gap, right? This is a pretty clear gap that we have that needs to be addressed because what we need to be able to do is pass, for example, the unique record identifier so that we can then take actions inside of Copilot to grab that data, to interact with it, to store that data inside of the topic. But I just want to note that because as you can imagine, uh, the team at Microsoft has already gotten this feedback and they are looking at incorporating that capability then in the future here. So pretty soon we're going to have the ability then as well to pay it past basically record information into Copilot so that we can then do something with it. Now at a very basic level as you're seeing here, all that's happening is that I have a phrase or a trigger phrase that I've set up inside of here that I use then to go ahead and basically take a bunch of the different types of variables that Microsoft has and then display them inside of the Copilot pane, right? So this is, I always like to say, the very first time I started development on any type of Dynamics product, which would have been Division back in the day, I loved message prompts, right? It would just pop up and tell me all the variables and things of that nature before we had really good debugging tools. Well, in this situation, I use that same approach to basically say, well, what are the different types of variables that Microsoft has that they're storing or passing between basically our finance and operations experience to Copilot then that's inside of Dynamics 365, right? And we're expecting that to get better as time goes on as well. So just to note, that's one limitation just to kind of note. The only other li limitation just to kind of note here is the fact that the experience from a Copilot perspective inside of finance and operations doesn't have the exact same capabilities of what the actual bot or Copilot supports what do I mean by that? So let's let's do an example of this, right? So if I wanted to create, for example, a new topic, and I want to make it so that it will summarize based upon maybe uh, a sales order number, or maybe I want to ask it a question to say, what can you do on a customer or with a grower or at this record, right? Like at some point, we're probably gonna wanna have something very similar to what we see in Dynamics 365 sales, where when you log in and open Copilot, it has a bunch of actions that you can click on in the Copilot pane to basically then paste that experience into the pane to interact with it. So just as an example, if I edit this and I say, all right, let's add some things here. Let's say, what can I do with a vendor, right? So I could add that as a question. What can a vendor do, right? We can do a couple different phrases that are inside of here. Basically, what we're saying is that when I enter in this text as a trigger, I want to take a particular path or action that's going to occur now with this particular co-pilot. Now, what I'd want to do is I'd want to have something really nice that would then display that information, right, in a really nice and consistent manner. So an example of that would be if I click on the plus action inside of here and I ask with an adaptive card, we have our adaptive card here and you're probably like, well, what's an adaptive card, Scott? 
Well, let's go ahead and open up our adaptive form, uh, adaptive form designer, uh, card designer. But you can see here, like this is an example of an adaptive card that can actually be embedded then inside of basically our chatbot as part of those those transactions, right? And so if I take a look at this in the copilot, let's say I don't want to have my fact table that's inside of here. I'm going to copy basically this same payload as an example. You would obviously go through and do some updates with this, right? So an example of that would be on our description. What I would do is say something like, uh, you know, hi, hi, uh, Scott, or I could do a variable, right? Here's what you can do with a vendor in Dynamics 365, right? So in this situation, I could actually front load those types of comments or those inquiries to basically make it so that when it actually comes back with that response, we know how it's going to interact with it. And I can do things like from a title perspective here, I could say that this is not a title of publish and adapt, but this is the Stone Ridge Copilot capabilities that have been added. And if I want to change the picture, I could do that. I could add, for example, different text blocks that are inside of here. It's an adaptive card, right? And the cool thing to note here is that when we look at the version level, 1.3, I believe, is the target that is supported then. But the point here is that we can actually go through and then set up this copilot with maybe an adaptive card. We can copy, for example, that card content, which the payload is down here. And if you know how to do the, the visual editor inside of here and you know how to basically update the uh, 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 JSON, YAML, whatever it is that's inside of here, you're able to go through and basically make your own types of views, conditions, containers, images, you name it as part of that. Now, if I come over to here and I paste, for example, that into here, we should see that adaptive card then come up as part of that, right? So what can I do with a vendor? I've got these two particular actions that are exposed inside of here. I'm gonna go ahead and save this copilot. And what I'm gonna do before I then publish it, I'm gonna have to resave it just really quickly, is that I'm gonna name what this topic is inside of here as well. And so as you can imagine, what you should start looking at then from a sales or from a copilot enablement perspective is like, topics could branch out, right? You could have a general topic, like a customer topic, a vendor topic, an item topic, a general ledger topic. Like that's the way I would start with it. And then from there, you can have subtopics that those topics can call and pass information to as you go through that, right? So if you think about it that way, that'll keep it uh, a little bit easier to understand the pathing that occurs with it as you go through those processes. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name this. So I usually name this, uh, uh, what was it, uh, SSI Copilot app, and then I'm going to say this is the vendor ask, or what can I do, right, or something like that. But the point here is that I'm setting up that topic. I can save the topic again so that we have that information basically saved inside of here. And then what I can do is I can go to this and I can actually go ahead and then publish this as part of that copilot. And we're going to see it's going to do some validation, some checking to make sure that everything is good to go. And then finally, it should say that it has actually gone through and then published basically that capability or that change of that topic then into basically our co-pilot. So we can see it's getting to the final step here as it's going through in publishing. And what we should then see, hopefully in just a second here, is that it comes back as successful. And what we can then do is we can now go into finance and operations to interact, obviously, um, with our co-pilot. So if we wait just a couple more seconds, we can see that the published is good to go and it published at 1148. If I come into here now, and let's just go ahead and refresh this screen just as the example, because I want to make sure I've got the current copilot. If I pop out that copilot pane, and then we go back here, we look at our topics, if you remember, and we're going to go ahead and look at our vendor. What can I do as part of that topic? What can I do with a vendor, right? So let's start simple. What can I do with a vendor? right? Has a question inside of here. And then you can see, look at that. Matt comes up inside of here and we can see that adaptive card, but you can probably see we've got a little bit of an issue with that adaptive card, right? So another one of the limitations just to note right now is that when we look at some of the buttons and some of the actions that can be exposed in an adaptive card, 
Right now inside of here, we don't have the ability yet to support those. Whereas on the Dynamics 365 sales copilot capability, we do have that option. So how do you get around that? Well, basically what you would do is you would do a text-based response instead of trying to do those buttons where like we saw, what can you do uh, well, earlier in the demonstration, it showed it as a bulleted point list. Well, for now, inside of Copilot, until they support more of these rich type uh, context controls that are inside of the Copilot pane, you probably want to use some of those bullet points basically to be able to drive some of that conversation. So just a heads up on it. I noticed that as I was going through it, it's not to rip on it. It's an initial product launch, right? You can only do so much. And as you can see, you can still do quite a bit with it. It's just that you need to know kind of what those limitations are as you go through that. Now, that's great, Scott, right? It's the really basic thing. Like, let's go a little bit further than this. Like, I want to do actions with this. I want it to look at data, or I want it to interact with data to basically create something as part of this process. So as an example here, if I go back to our home screen, and I'm going to refresh, for example, Copilot inside of here. And I'm going to go into then, for example, my sales order list inside of here. And inside of my sales orders, I'm going to go ahead and open up then one of uh, my uh, sales orders where I should have some good value on it. I think, for example, our 1138, which has been invoiced inside of the system, should have some of this detail. Uh, it does. So what I can do here is basically... Um, a couple of things. So here, here's where I think this is just a lot of fun. Uh, summarize uh, this sales order, right? So I can provide a summary for a sales order. What sales order number should I use for summary, right? Once again, had to ask this because I want the sales order number eventually to get here. So I'm designing things where I can just rip out the question that asks it. Uh, it's kind of cool inside of the topic. Um, what I can do is I can actually take, for example, summarize this sales order. And if I had like a sales order number in it or if I had record context in it, I could do a condition in the topic that would then ask, for example, the sales order number if it doesn't need it or if it doesn't know it, excuse me, or if it knows it. So in the future, when Microsoft adds it where I can pass the record information, I don't have to do a lot of redevelopment then inside of my Copilot to be able to tackle that, right? So I'm already starting to design Copilots around that thought in mind. So that way, as features are introduced, I can basically then add, for example, that variable so that I have that populated so I don't have to actually ask the question related to it. But this is an example then of that multi-step process, right? Where what we're going to do is we're going to ask a question, we're going to get a response, we may ask another question, we're going to get a response. And basically from a, a co-pilot perspective, we start to frame then obviously that detail as we go through that. So I'm going to go ahead and put in basically what that particular order number is inside of the system. And what we're going to see is it's actually working on something right and the magic here is well what is it what is it working on right so what we can see here is that it's going through and basically capturing some of that detail then for that given record and it's going to come back then with a summary and with this summary I can promise you that I have not done anything other than provided some base context of what it is that this record is to provide feedback for it. So we can see here, for example, that we've got a bunch of different details with this. Uh, the payment method is check and the payment terms are net 45. You know, the cool thing about this is that in the future, like what I could see would be this is an automatic prompt that pops up then for an end user experience so that when they open up a sales order, it provides that summary for them could I do that as an end user? Yeah, I could, right? I could actually go ahead and click on, for example, my header. And on my header, I could go down to the payment term section inside of here. And I could see it's net 45. And I could see that it's a check as well inside of here, right? So the, the key thing I'm just kind of pronouncing here is the fact that the summarization-based capabilities can make it a lot easier from an end user experience, especially if you define, for example, what your customer service representative would need as summary for any order that they navigate to, right? And inside of the Dynamics 365 sales environment, from a co-pilot perspective, you can actually configure now, as an example, what fields will be used in that descriptive response as we go through that. So what does that look like then from a topic perspective? Because now we're getting a little bit more complex here, right, as we go through this. Well, on our topics, for that topic, if I go back 
and we look at the different topic lists that we have inside of here, one of them that we have is this SSI Copilot app, Summarize Grower, and then Summarize Sales Order, right? So if I click on my Summarize Sales Order, we're going to see that we've got some multiple steps that are involved right here, right? So the phrase I said is Summarize a Sales Order. From there, it adds a question for it, and what we can see is it takes that response, and what it does is it saves that response then in this particular conversation as a variable that I called glo a global, which is the sales order number that gets relayed to it. Now, here's where your mind should hopefully be blown because this is where the power then of Copilot Studio really, really comes into play. What I can do is I can do an action now and I can use Power Automate to grab whatever data that I want to then interact or actually go through a process inside of Power Automate. And if you understand that, using Flow, for example, to interact with business information, you understand now how powerful this is. And if you don't, let me just show it really quickly. So in this example, what I'm doing is I'm saying, take that sales order number string that I set up inside of my Power Automate and then call this SSI Copilot app get sales order automate action to grab then the sales order record inside of here. And if I want to view the flow details of this by clicking on that, what I can do is I can basically then expose that particular flow and I'll click on the edit for it so you can see it. So I've got SSI Copilot app get sales order. If I click on edit for it, it's actually going to be pretty simple. What we'll see here is that when a power virtual agent calls the flow, I want to pass a sales order number that is a variable into this flow. So that way Copilot knows that it, or Copilot Studio knows it needs to pass a variable. And that's where we got that definition of the variable. What I then did is I said, grab the sales order number that I passed in from the Power Virtual Agent. I go ahead and I compose that body value so I can debug it and take a look at it. And then what I do is I return basically that value from this particular list back to Power Virtual Agents. And just to kind of show what it looks like then, if we look at that run history, it was a little bit longer for our initial one here, but if I click on this as an example for that run, we can see, for example, that Power Virtual Agents passed in that sales order number that we pasted into there. It found that record. So here's our output of that record that's inside of here. If I wanted to do multiple records, I could do that as well. And then what it did is it basically took that and composed it. I use Compose typically in Power Automate just to be able to see data, uh, to be able to look at it, interact with it. People use parse JSON quite often as well, but let's say that you want to be able to just debug what's coming out of the information. Compose is a really good action for that. And then we can see it returns that. And what I did is I actually returned it as a sales order record here. And you can see all the detail of that sales order record then is passed back basically into that topic. Now, what I do with that information is I take that sales order record, that string, and I store it as the sales order record string that is local then to this topic as we're going through this process. So it's a really cool concept. Inside of these Power Virtual Agents slash these uh, co-pilots, you can basically go through and specify both locals that are for the topic pathing that we're going down. Um, if you really think about it, like if you're a developer, it's very akin to it's a method that you're calling and then you have locals that are inside of that method that you can interact with but you may for that class or for that namespace have a global that you may be storing somewhere else right so really kind of cool this is how you do it non-programmatically by using them basically copilot studio to drive that but i save that information then to a record and what happens then is i call another power automate so i did a two-step Power Automate process. And the reason for that is that I may want to get a sales order record from maybe other topics that are inside of here. So your mind should still go down the path of if you're making something reusable, you want to object orient, obviously, some of these different types of uh, power automates that you're going to be calling for it. But the net result is that you can take these and piece these out and have multiple automates that could then gather information from multiple sources. And what you see here then in this power automate, 
I pass basically the sales order record and then return that sales order summary that's inside of here. And if I want to view those details, if I click on the view details inside of here just to drill into this, what we're going to see then inside of this Power Automate is that we had one that ran six, six minutes ago. So this is not demo code. This is stuff that actually does do stuff. And what we see here is that in this particular scenario is that we call a Power Virtual Agent as part of it. But then what we do is we actually create that summary by using the text with GPT by using a prompt. So inside of Power Automate, there's a bunch of new abilities or capabilities that were added where you can basically define what you want that prompt to be, right? You can do things like AI summarize. You can do your own custom prompt that then has, for example, the text that you're going to call for the large language model that then returns that value. Or you can use the AI summarize if you don't want to create your own custom prompt and just use something that would be repeatable, for example. And in this example, what I've done is I've passed, for example, that record. And then in this base 64 encoding that we see right here, this really is just a statement as to what that record is. So let me show it from an edit view here because I think it'll make a little bit more sense than the, the flow here from the response. But we create uh, a call. We pass in our sales order record that I called it as a text string. I take that particular string. I say, use the AI summarize and you could use AI classify. You could do sentiment analysis. You could extract information from it. But I wanted to do the AI summarize inside of here. And then what I do is I actually go ahead and then pass that sales order record. But what I also do is I add additional context inside of here that states, for example, what this record is. And I say this is a sales header record from Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations because remember the co-pilot is still trained off of all the general information from a large language model perspective on Dynamics 365, on the help articles and all that detail. And really what I'm doing is I'm framing the context of what this record is as we go through this process. Then what happens is the output then of this create text from GPT using a prompt comes back here as our sales order summary text value that's inside of here. And finally then we return that prompt then, that value, that message back to the end user as part of that scenario, right? So this is, like I said, a lot of fun and really cool, right? Because it just gives you so many different options now where you could use this with Business Central. You could you could put a bot or a co-pilot, and I gotta be careful because they're, they're technically bots and co-pilot. You know, you can use those words kind of interchangeably, but I know they call them co-pilot studio now, so they're co-pilots. Net result, though, is that you could actually query Business Central data from a website where maybe you create a co-pilot experience for your customers to be able to look up orders. You could do that right now. You could create a co-pilot. You could create the topic that says when that shows up, for example, to do that particular action. Because what you can also do here from these particular co-pilot perspectives is after you've gone through and published it, is that you can actually configure what channel these are actually available on as well. Meaning if I want to publish it to Modern or M365 now for these, I could actually take Copilot Studio details and basically publish them all the way to Microsoft Copilot. So that way when I'm asking questions inside of Office 365, I can get to that data then that's inside of Dynamics 365 now, right? I could do a, a website or Teams. There's some of them obviously that are not available inside of here, but the net result is that you can use these different channels then to theater theoretically then expose this particular Copilot and even more detail out here. So. Lots of great capabilities here. And once again, if you want to test this, the other example I like to do here is summarize a sales order. The power of making it inside of Copilot Studio is that you can use the same type of Copilot experience that's on the far right pane here in a different channel or even then inside of a different application if you wanted to as part of that. So it just exposes a lot of great capabilities in that regard to be able to go through and then obviously extend the first party capabilities. So I think I, I want to kind of stop here because I know we're, we're getting at time. It's a lot that we covered obviously in a, a very short, short amount of time. Um, I know people were putting some chat in here as well. Um, so like Sam, like you said, yeah, very powerful. Uh, Rob, yeah, returns a narrative about the entity 
entity, right? Like it, it's just, it's a really nice feature in that regard to be able to summarize some of these details that we have. And like I said, it it's just, it there's so many different things that you can do with this, right? You can talk with it naturally. You can build out more topics. You can make it, for example, so that this can be used in different applications. Um, the list just goes on and on and on. And I think the, the cool thing here is that we're at the very beginning of this where we're looking at then extending these capabilities. And quite candidly, once you understand this design pattern with it, adding additional capabilities is, is a really, really, really easy capability, as you can imagine as well. So I guess with that, um, let's go ahead and do a wrap because we're a couple minutes over. Uh, thank you again for joining if you were able to, to make it. Uh, hopefully it kind of opened your eyes a little bit on the finance and operations-based co-pilot capabilities and how you can extend them. Um, as you can tell, we've had a lot of fun with this. We've got a lot of different scenarios that we're working through um, as a business. So if you have questions around it, uh, feel free to reach out to our team or even to, to me, Scott F. at StoneRidgeSoftware.com. Um, next week, we're going to have a special confab. Uh, we're going to have our community conference. So uh, just expect instead of two weeks from now, we're going to have one that's actually for a little bit of a shorter period of time where we're summarizing then obviously some of the conference events that we're doing from Stone Ridge. And if you have not signed up for Stone Ridge Connect yet, I would really recommend that you do. Uh, I'm sure that you'd have a lot of fun there. I'll be there. There'll be a lot of our team members there as well. We'll have a lot of different videos that we're going to be showing. So it's going to be a lot of fun, obviously, as we go through that, that experience. And I guess with that, uh, yeah, have a fantastic rest of your uh, afternoon and day. And we will see you next week. And uh, we'll go from there. So thank you much for joining and have a great one.